For those of you who don't know who Brene Brown is, she is this amazing researcher and I just found out about her and she actually specializes in a bunch of studies surrounding vulnerability as well as the topic of shame. And I recently picked up one of her newer books called Daring Greatly. And I just kind of had an aha moment and with a lot of the stuff that's been going on and especially since my video with Dr. Todd Grande went up, I remember him saying this. So just one last note that flexible thinking is our friend. So I wanted to use some flexible thinking and talk about how I was wrong. What is up everybody? This is Chris from The Rewired Soul where we talk about the problem but focus on the solution. And if you're new to my channel, my channel is all about mental health. And what I like to do is talk mental health topics. So if you're into that, make sure you subscribe and ring that notification bell. Sorry, I'm still working on kind of like a newish intro but bear with me just a little bit, all right? But yeah, um, this is interesting. I have a bunch of video ideas kind of mapped out, but I've always been the type of person where if something just kind of inspires me, I'm like, you know what, sit down, put it out on camera if you think it might be able to help some people. And, and yeah, some people are going to think like, oh, Chris is trying to repair his image and this and this and this, and that's cool. Because like I mentioned in my comeback video, I am just laser focused on helping all of you who want to get help. And if you're open to the idea of getting help, or if you're open to what Todd Grande talked about, Dr. Todd Grande rather, about having flexible thinking. And that's something that's really helped me out over the years is getting rid of old ideas. Like a lot of us hold on to our old ideas. From my experience, my experience, a lot of us tend to hold on to these old ideas with this like, kung fu grip and we refuse to let go of them like these beliefs that we have and i have a lot of videos coming up about this right and it wasn't until i let go of some of my old beliefs that i actually was able to get sober and stay sober for all these years and part of it is knowing where i was wrong right so anyways again um brene brown she is a researcher she um talks about vulnerability and shame. Some of you might have seen her viral TED talk, you know, and uh, yeah, I'm reading this book called Daring Greatly. I picked up the book because I'm like, yeah, this is cool. Like it's gonna teach me how to like be brave and all this other stuff, you know, especially with what's um, been going on around me and, and things like that. And, and yeah, like there's so many topics in there that I didn't even expect to pop up, but it's a phenomenal book. If you wanna check it out, I'll link it down in the description below. Um, I'm only maybe about a quarter of the way through the book. Uh, I've been just like been sitting around playing video games, listening to audiobooks, or I even got like a coloring book and I'll listen to audiobooks and stuff like that. But but yeah, like um, there, there's just topics about vulnerability. Um, the most recent part I'm on is talking about uh, shame between uh, men and women. So anyways, uh, Brene Brown kind of breaks down the difference between guilt and shame. And I think that's really important, right? Because I remember I was just uh, uh, talking to my beautiful girlfriend, Tristan, about this the other day. Um, guilt and shame are often like used together. Like, uh, at least in my experience, um, being a recovering drug addict and alcoholic, I experience a lot of guilt and shame. When I talk to other people in recovery, they talk a lot about guilt and shame. And I had a therapist kind of interject one time when I was uh, doing a group and just asked everybody, like, do you know the difference between guilt and shame? And a lot of people don't. So what she, she uh, what this therapist was talking about was the same thing that Brene was talking about, is, is guilt is kind of something that we do that changes the perception of others about us, right? Like. For example, being guilty. If I go rob a store, right, I'm guilty, right? This is, you know, the feedback that I'm getting. I am guilty of this. Shame is more about the perception of ourselves. And, you know, there's some there's some debates around whether or not these two things coexist, like they're two different things. But, you know, one thing that I was, you know, I look at with my, uh, you know, addiction was I did something like, you know, I would steal or lie or cheat or whatever. And I, I would feel guilty, right? I was guilty of that. But then also, then the shame, like what have I done, right? Who am I? I'm not a good person, all those other things, right? But anyways, the topic I wanna jump into was this topic around shame, and I know there's been a lot of public talks about public shaming and things like that. And anyways, um, this, this portion I'm on in uh, Brene's book is talking about 
the shaming of other people. And you know I love me some analogies. If you've been around for a while, you know I love me some analogies. And she was talking about, you know, maybe like a, a mother or a father, you know, in the grocery store and the, the kid is just throwing a fit, right? And those looks that they, they get, right? Like people looking at them, you know, one of the things that Brene Brown talks about is like one of the, one of the things that uh, mothers typically, you know, experience feelings of shame about is, are they a good mother or not? So imagine like, you know, a parent and some of you parents out there, you've had this, your kids acting up in public and those looks you get, like those looks like, come on, like take care of your, your son or your daughter, or, you know, all those things, you feel feelings of shame. And Brene was talking about that, like rather than giving them that look, like remember like, you know, this is something that we're all in together and we all experience similar things, you know, instead like, give them a look like, yo, I've been there. And that's something I, I really try to do because, you know, my son's 10 now and he doesn't act a fool in public anymore, but he used to, he used to. And like now when I see like, you know, kids crying in public and things like that, you know, I, I try to do that. Like just kind of like a little like look of encouragement, you know, or I smile at the kid, like kids are just kids. That's just what kids do, you know what I mean? But there's also this kind of idea, like when we're projecting that kind of shaming onto other people, you know, it makes us a lot more insecure about ourselves because we're judging so many other people, which then turns it into us judging ourselves. And anyways, it got me thinking when she made that analogy, I'm like, oh my God, like it, it makes a lot more sense now. Like, so although I'm not making videos about YouTubers for a long, long, long time until I kind of figure out a better way of going about it, I can see how wrong it was to do what I was, right? And in a little bit, I'm gonna ask you to do some uh, flexible thinking as well, because this is a topic that I've been talking about with you know, some other people, some other creators, trying to figure out the best way to do this, right? But anyways, although my videos have not been specifically always about the YouTuber. I try to use them as a jumping off point to pivot and say, okay, if you can relate to this, maybe these are some things you could do, right? But anyways, I was pulling in these drama topics and these YouTubers, they're already getting dozens of videos made about them, dozens, right? Which is contributing then to their shame. So although my goal was to help the audience by using YouTubers in the title and kind of like to give context, it was contributing to the shame of these YouTubers and that was wrong. Like that was wrong and like, you know, um, I made an apology video, but again, I'm sorry for that. Um, you know, my, my intention was never there, but you know, with my channel blowing up in the way it did, a lot of these YouTubers did end up seeing that. And and yeah, like this this whole situation that I'm going through, like, you know, um, it's made me a lot more empathetic. Like now that the tables have turned, it's made me a whole lot more empathetic towards creators. And something that Brene Brown talks about with, um, you know, vulnerability, shame, and all those other things, like YouTubers, YouTubers are really putting themselves out there. And not everybody is doing that, you know? Um, there's a lot of comments and everything like that that we kind of sift through, but you know, it's only a select few, even though there's thousands, if not millions of YouTubers, it's only a select group of people who are willing to get vulnerable on, on camera. And if any YouTubers are watching this, like I commend you, cause that's something Brene Brown was talking about. I'm like, you know what? You're right, you know what I mean? And that's kind of what the title Daring Greatly is about. So I do respect that about all creators, all creators at all. And not even just all creators, all of you as well. If you've ever put yourself out there, like that's huge, that's courageous. That's, you know, getting vulnerable. Like Brene Brown talks about her TED talk that went vulnerable and how much anxiety she got around it and everything like that because she was getting on stage and just putting herself out there. So all creators, you know, need, you know, they need a little bit of just, you know, a little bit of applause just for doing that. So yeah, so now, now that I'm realizing that I was contributing to that shame, even though it wasn't my intention necessarily, you know, in some cases that's definitely arguable, but, but here's, here's where the flexible thinking's coming in. Here's something um, Dr. Todd Grande and I talked about in the video I just posted. Something else I've been talking about, I've been interviewed by a few people, some stuff's coming up. Um, but yeah, so 
we we have this responsibility as creators, right? And it's it's to put put things out there into the world knowing that we have this influence. And that's something that's been kind of bugging me too, look reflecting on everything that's been happening is was I putting the best version of myself out here on camera? And that answer is no, obviously. Um, but, you know, I've been called out on a lot of things and many of them are fair criticism. Some of them are just, you know, those of you who read my Medium article, you know about that. But, you know, do I deserve to be called out on those things? Absolutely, absolutely, you know? And that's kind of where this moral debate comes in. When YouTubers are exhibiting certain behaviors publicly and it can possibly influence people, you know, like where where is the point where that type of behavior needs to be called out? Because at the end of the day, who the hell am I? I'm some dude sitting in my apartment making videos, right? Who the hell am I? Am I like the YouTube police? Like, like brrr, hey, that's bad behavior. Do not model that behavior. And <laughs> I just made the sound of like a, a life uh, a lifeguard whistle. <laughs> no police officers use that. Or do they? If they do, let me know. But anyways, like who is policing that? Who is doing that? Is it, is it up to us, you know, because like, Obviously, you know, I'm a father, so when my son watches things, I'll talk to him about, is this good or bad behavior? Should we model this, da, 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 right? Like, I, I talk to him about those things, but is it my responsibility? Is it my responsibility to put that out on YouTube? Like, something that, you know, whenever I plan on getting back to discussing YouTubers and trying to figure out how to do that, one thing that I'm going to do is reach out to YouTubers. Now that I know that they actually see my videos and stuff, you know, I'm going to reach out to them and say, hey, you know. But on the other hand, too, like, one thing that I've made plenty of videos on is enabling. You know what I mean? Like, is it our responsibility to call out bad behavior in fear of enabling bad behavior, you know? And I just wanna kinda get your wheels turning on this. This is in no way meant to justify anything I've done, but this is a conversation I'm having with a lot of other people, and I want you to kind of be a part of this conversation because although I've, you know, put myself in a tricky situation, I think it's something that needs to be discussed, right? Like, there are, you know, commentary channels and, you know, even drama channels who talk about these things and they're calling out bad behavior. But then there's also the shaming portion of it. Now, John Oliver actually just did a great episode of this on last week tonight. And you can kind of see, you can kind of see that he and his writing team don't even have the answers to this topic, right? Like, he talks about how certain things need to be called out, you know, but but at what point? Although, for what it is worth, we do think probably more carefully than you might imagine about who we're making fun of, why we're doing it, and how. We ask ourselves questions all the time, like, should we use their name? How much power do they have? And <laughs> I'm not saying that we're perfect at all. You might disagree with choices that we've made, but we have honestly thought about it. And sometimes the decision does get difficult. And especially when you figure that every YouTuber isn't talking to each other, like 10 videos might go up on the same subject, thus creating more of this kind of shaming, but they, they all didn't know that they were creating this, you know? So I don't know, it's just an interesting topic that I've just really been bouncing off, you know, within my, my own introspection, as well as with other creators and, you know, professionals and things like that. So I wanna hear from all of you down in the comments, like, although it does contribute to shaming, you know, of people who are getting vulnerable and putting themselves on camera, where is our responsibility as creators or even viewers to call out certain behaviors that might be influencing certain people? So anyways, anyways, again, to wrap it back, um, you know, to my own growth process and stuff. And, you know, I was thinking about it, like some people in my circle are probably gonna hate the fact that I made this video. And the way I kind of thought about it was like, meh, I don't really have anything to lose. And I do wanna make videos like this. Whenever I kind of get these aha moments and growing moments and things like that, I do wanna capture them because I know a lot of you out there are looking to develop, you know, your own life and improve and things like that. And part of what, 
you know, my goal has always been is if I've experienced something and learned from it, I do want to share it with all of you, right? And this is something I, I, you know, Brene Brown definitely taught me just now reading her book. It's an excellent book, by the way. I think I already said that. But anyways, anyways, I hope you are all having an excellent week so far. I still owe you some afterlife videos. So this video is up in the morning. Afterlife video coming up tonight. There's so many good topics. I want to jump into it. Um, so you all know... Um, I am going back to two videos a day. I know some of you, you know, there's debate around, is that too much, is that too little? This is my job. I'm working a full eight, nine hours. I am still taking breaks. I've been playing a lot of uh, Apex uh, Season 1 Battle Pass today, so don't, don't worry, I am taking care of my mental health and all that stuff. But anyways, I, I do hope that you all get kind of involved in this conversation and we can kind of, you know, find the best way to do this thing together, all right? But anyways, that's all I got for this video. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you're new, make sure you subscribe and ring that notification bell. And a huge, huge thank you to everybody supporting the channel over on Patreon. You're all amazing. And if you would like to help support the channel, you can click or tap right there, all right? Thanks so much for watching. I'll see you next time.